So what is ARP? Well, my name's David Staples, and that's what we're talking about today, the address resolution protocol coming right up. So you may have heard the term ARP before. What is the address resolution protocol? Well, it's certainly something that you need to know about for the A+, the Network+, Plus, the Security+, Plus exams from CompTIA, as well as the CCENT and CCNA and above exams for Cisco. Uh, but let's talk just kind of at a somewhat basic level about what it is today. And then, of course, we'll go into some more detail uh, in another video, most likely in my Cisco playlist. If you're looking for the rest of my Cisco videos, be sure to check those out. If you're looking for more Security+, Plus, check those out. If you're looking for one of the CompTIA topics, check out my other videos for CompTIA. And I hope that as you're watching these, you'll consider clicking on that subscribe button for me down below. But let's talk about what is ARP. Well, I've got a program open called Wireshark, and it's what we call a packet sniffer. And so it actually lets me see packets that are moving back and forth, and we can actually see what an ARP request looks like here. So ARP is the address resolution protocol, and it essentially helps us to resolve an IP address down to the MAC address. Of course, the MAC address is a hardware address that is burned into the chip, typically. We can actually set that in some of the virtual machines. So for those who are sitting here going, well, you know, I can actually spoof a MAC address or I can set my own. Okay, we're not going into those topics today. We're just really talking about kind of the very, very basics here, right? Uh, so what does this look like? Well, as I mentioned, essentially what's going to happen is a computer, when it goes to pull up a website, we know that we've got the domain name. We resolve that domain name down to an IP address using DNS. I've got a DNS video that you can check out as well. And after we resolve that to an IP address, we still need to get down to layer two of our OSI model, right? And of course, I've got a video of the OSI model. If you're not familiar with that, be sure to check that one out. So how do we resolve it down to that MAC address? Well, essentially we send out what we call a broadcast. So this broadcast basically says who has and then whatever IP address. So we can see here it says who has 172.19.131.2. These are some packets that I captured from a certain network somewhere. Uh, and then it basically says whoever has that, please tell me. My address is 172.19.131.105. Of course, there's no please or thank you or anything there. So how rude, right? Uh, but essentially, if we take a look at the contents of that packet, we'll come down here into this next window. We can see this, the sender's MAC address was this one right here. And then, of course, we've got the sender's IP address. But the target MAC address here is basically just all zeros. It's basically blank. Uh, we've also got the target IP address, 172.19.131.2. So saying, hey, please tell me what your MAC address is. And then, of course, if we move on down a row, we can actually see that we've got this reply. It says 172.19.131.2 is at 00E04B2296D9. And of course, if I look at the contents of the packet down here, I can see the sender's MAC address is this right here, the 000E4B22969. This is being sent directly to the computer that requested it, which is the F40F24 and so on. Here's the IP address that sent the packet, and here's the IP address that received it. So now we can actually talk on layer two, that data link layer of the OSI model. So now every computer, as we learn these MAC addresses, it actually gets stored in what we call an ARP cache. So now, how do we see what's in that ARP cache? Well, we've actually got a command at the command line that we can actually see the contents of that. So whether you're on Windows or a Mac, as I happen to be, you can pull up this command prompt and type in something that looks like this. So it's ARP-A, and we'll press Enter. Of course, I've got a rather large ARP table because I do also have virtual machines that run on top of the Mac, but here you can actually see some MAC addresses that have gotten stored in the ARP cache on this computer. And that way, next time I need to actually send, some, send a packet to that particular IP address, I don't have to ask what their MAC address is again. I basically just go look it up from this uh, ARP cache, and I can resolve, and I can go ahead and send the packet on layer two right to that device. So I hope you found this explanation helpful and you're studying for whatever exam it is that you're looking at at the moment or just for general knowledge. Uh, thank you for all those who have already subscribed to my channel. If you haven't already, why not? Be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. So leave a like and if you've got any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below as well. Look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. Thanks for tuning in.